The Architecture Components Lifecycle Library is designed to help you solve common Android lifecycle headaches and to make your apps more maintainable and testable. This here is an introduction to the Live Data and Lifecycle classes. Live Data is a data holder class that is also lifecycle aware. It keeps a value and allows that value to be observed. Now, a primary use case of Live Data is to update the UI. You'll have a model object, such as this user object, which is wrapped by Live Data. Then you'll have a UI component, like an activity, that will observe a Live Data. When details of the user Live Data change, the activity is notified and it updates its UI. Live Data makes it easy to keep what's showing on screen in sync with the data. So let's take a look at the code. Live Data objects will usually be kept in the ViewModel class. If you're not sure what a ViewModel is, you should check out this video. You will always define the type of object the Live Data holds here, and it can be any object type. Next, in the onCreate of the activity, you make an observer object. The onChange method defines what happens when the Live Data object actually changes. In this example, the method updates a text view of the activity. Then all that's left is to have the observer subscribe to the Live Data to receive updates. If you observe a Live Data object that already contains a value, your observer immediately gets notified with that value. Once observation starts, when the Live Data is updated, the UI will automatically update. What makes Live Data different from other observables is that it's also lifecycle aware. Now, to understand what this means, though, you first need to know about the lifecycle class. A lifecycle is an object that defines an Android lifecycle. Relatedly, lifecycle owner is an interface for objects that have a lifecycle. And a lifecycle observer is an interface for observing lifecycle owners. As of support library version 26.1, both activity and fragment implement lifecycle owner. These classes provide ways for you to both query the state of a lifecycle and to receive callbacks for lifecycle events. Live data leverages this. When a live data observer is created, it is associated with a lifecycle owner. Observer objects are then only notified of their updates if their associated lifecycle is in the started or resumed state. Observers also automatically remove themselves when their lifecycle owner is destroyed. Live data is therefore protected against accidentally updating a UI component that's in the background or destroyed, without you having to do anything extra. So how is live data actually updated? Set value and post value are two methods for updating live data. Use set value if you're running on the UI thread, and use post value if you're running on a background thread. Additionally, room and live data go together like peanut butter and jelly. Room can return live data objects, which are automatically notified when the database changes, and have their data loaded in a background thread for you. This makes it very easy to have the UI update when your database updates. You can learn more about room in the introduction to room video. While we're on the topic of updating live data, Let's talk about encapsulation. You'll usually work with live data and mutable live data. Now, as the name implies, mutable live data is mutable. It exposes the set value and post value methods. Live data, on the other hand, is read only. In general, your view model should be the only class directly updating live data. This means that within the view model class, you can use mutable live data. And then from the outside of the view model, you can expose plain live data objects. As your live data expertise increases, you might find that you need to manipulate your live data. You can use built-in transformations, or you can make your own. The built-in map transformation lets you apply a function to the output of one live data and then propagate the results downstream to another live data. In this example, whenever the user live data changes, username is notified, runs the map function, and then emits the resulting full name. The switch map transformation is a lot like map, but instead of the mapping function emitting a value, it emits an entirely new live data. An example use case is if you have a bunch of users, perhaps stored in a room database. You could use the switch map to change which user you're actually observing. You'd input the ID here. Then you'd need to provide a function that returns a user live data given that ID. That function could then emit a totally new live data, but you wouldn't need to update the observers. Here's the code with a live data for updating the ID, a function that takes that ID and outputs the related user live data, and the switch map function. If you want to make your own custom data transformations, you should take a look at Mediator Live Data. Mediator Live Data includes methods to add and remove source live data objects. You can then combine and propagate events from all of the sources downstream. One use case is if you want to display a live data object that could be updated either from the local database or the network. You can take two sources and add them to the Mediator Live Data. The first source would be a local database live data object, and the second source would be a network live data object. Then your activity would only need to observe the single mediator live data object, but it would receive on-change updates from both of these sources. 
Getting started with live data is simple, but there's a lot of room for potential experimentation with this lifecycle aware observable. Hopefully this has inspired you to build something. And as always, the documentation is linked. 